I always looked a lot for kind of a personality and cultural fit. That tends to be probably the, big, the single biggest factor as to if someone's going to stay there long term or not. A lot of the time extroverts get hired over introverts just because the people interviewing just think they're more charismatic or whatever. Um, I, I try to do a lot of the time the opposite or at least have a lot of other people in on it that are not they're going to make sure that we don't end up in like kind of an echo chamber of types of people. Having a good personality, but also like being humble and proving that you can learn fast, um, I think is something that I really try to hammer hard. And then problem solving. Like we, I tell them from day one, problem solving is, is so key when you go in. If you can like, if you answer a question with like, I don't know, that's like way worse than being like, uh, here, let me break the problem down, let me solve the parts I know, I have no idea how to do this part, this is how I might find it. Um, that's just a way better way to, to approach an interview. So. We don't allow developers to use new technology on projects. We just don't, because I've been burned too, too many times. You know, you hire the one developer that does Ruby at your Python shop, and then now you have to support that project, and he took a job with somebody else. So, you know, I've had this happen over and over. We had a project where we used Ember and then React overtook it, or Angular overtook it, then now React. And so it, it's good to like know those technologies, it's good to play in them, but it's a really bad idea to do actual projects in them. We were talking upstairs about fake it so you make it. I think that there's a, a balance that needs to be struck between fake it so you make it and being humble because. Uh, I think you can get far in life by faking it till you make it, um, but I also think that you can get, especially in a tech interview, you can get caught like that if you're like just, you know, BSing the answer. Yeah, exactly. the, the one part that's been probably more difficult for me is you really need to embrace the salesperson inside yourself because you, when, when you're working at a place, you have your task list, maybe you're managing projects, or maybe you're running a team, um, but uh, you're not constantly having to go out and find new, new clients or, or have some sort of funnel to get new clients coming in the door. From the business side, as a freelancer, it is more important that you do, like you could do B plus work, but if you deliver on an A plus schedule and make sure you over communicate with people, you're going to be a far better freelancer um, than if you're an amazing designer and you are always late.